Hi guys and welcome, Claremont here. In today's video I'll be evaluating how recent changes to liquid mechanics, specifically water, affected the performance of the game, as it has been brought to my attention by multiple people, most notably by Tango from the Hermitcraft server, that it is not good. As a test bet I'll be using my hostile mob farm design and the main reason is that apart from the actual water flashing system, there's not too much to it. It's a few bits of redstone to trigger the water dispensers and a very very slow clock to cycle them at the top. And the other reason for me to do it here is that I already have the design cloned 16 times here, so it should be a good stress test in terms of how CPU war updates are taking. And just to make sure that we are only testing water updates, I disabled mob spawning and removed all the hoppers from under the farms. The results of our testing today would apply to any farm type that cycles water. This could be other flashing type mob farms like Ilmango Head 1, Mambo Head 1 and other some crop farms that use flashing water to wipe the crops, netherworm farms or chorus fruit farms. One common misconception, at least up until 1.12, was that water updates caused a lot of lag. To show that's not the case, I have here 16 of my mob farm modules with 8 flashing platforms each, so 128 of those diamond shaped pads. Seems like a lot, but let's see how well it fares in terms of the overall performance. I'm running here on my carpet mod, but as we can see, all the rules has now been disabled, meaning that we are running pure vanilla in terms of the behavior as well as the performance. The only difference I made in this case is to enable the TPS display just to tell us how well or poorly the game is doing. Also to properly separate what isn't what isn't important uh, in terms of the game mechanics performance, I'm running a separate uh, dedicated multiplayer server with the game running and I have connected to it from a different computer so the TPS information we are displaying over here is not affected here by any client graphics performance issues. So those are totally independent. So if you look at the DPS rating here, what is really important is the millisecond per tick. That's how long it takes the game to do all the calculations required for each tick. And if that number is below 50, it means that the game is running perfectly fine at 20 ticks per second. But if we exceed 50 here, it means that all the game needs to slow down just a little bit to keep up all the work it needs to do. For example, if that number is 100, this means that we could only run 10 of those ticks in each second, so we are twice as slow comparing to what we should be at. However, the game will never run faster than it needs to, so at 0.5 we could technically be running at 2000 ticks per second, but the game still only does 20 of them per second. So let me turn on all the farms and let's see how are we doing. So with 16 farms running, we are clocking at about 20, 20 milliseconds per tick, so it's not bad. This means that we could be running not 16, but 40 of these farms at the same time, so up to 320 of those full water flushed diamonds and still be within the bounds to have 20 TPS, at least on this computer. So as I said, common misconception is that water causes a lot of lag, especially if we consider that these hostile mob farms, to maximize the output of the design here and match the mob spawning caps, you would only really need four of these running at the same time, and if you would build them low enough in the world, you would need only two. So there's plenty of performance here to be had for other things. Now let's switch to 113 and see how it fares. So, we are here in 1.13, latest snapshot, which has performance improvements listed as one of the fixes, so that's great. But it is some testing as well in 1.13 as well, so the results are comparable. Unfortunately, we don't have access to the millisecond per tick metric here. It's a pity that they added it to the F3 screen for the standalone single player game F3 screen, but they still haven't added it to the players that connect to the server. But hey, there are still ways we can do it. And that's by using the built-in vanilla profiler, which we can trigger using the debug start command. And then after some time, we can just type debug stop. As you can see, we are here perfectly running at 20 ticks per second. Unfortunately, we don't know what is our sub tick performance, but that's not a problem because we'll be running below 20 TPS, I can tell you, and straight up anyways. So let's turn on the farms and see what's happening. Thank you. 
Yep, three ticks per second. <laughs> now, the good thing is that Graham fixed the watchdog bug, so the server will be running rather than shutting down at three ticks per second, so that's good. But the bad thing is now each tick takes 300 milliseconds, so it's six times more than it should be, and 15 times slower than we had in 112. So the water flashing updates in 113 cost 15 times more CPU than in the previous version. What does it mean? If you have one of these, just one, you should be fine for now. The game would probably be able to support two, maybe two and a half of these towers running at the same time, which is really bad compared to 112 when we could run 40 of them for no reason really. <laughs> so in total with 113, still a little bit of work needs to be done. Enough said, I think. Let's go back to 112 and I have one more thing to show you. And that's something that I was thinking of doing. Just never got around to actually doing it. One reason being I thought water performance was actually good enough. And the other reason was that Update Aquatic was on the way. So they were riding the water anyways. And that was to optimize the water flow in 112. And that has been suggested by many people, especially I'm referring here to Nate and Ryan, who identified this behavior as very inefficient, and that is with water searching for holes to flow into. So what the water does, if you let it go, is to search up to five blocks away for holes. So if we, for example, plop the water here, it won't spill all over the place, just find this hole here. But if I plop the water one block further, it spills all over the place, and that's fine. The problem is that Warrior uses this 5 block search, first of all using a recursive algorithm, which is typically less efficient than the iterative approach, but what is more important is it does this 5 block search for all water levels, even for the tiniest level 1, I mean the in game is level 7, it doesn't matter, even if it cannot really flow anywhere from this spot. So what this means is that we have this very weird behavior that if I, for example, plop the water here, it will still attempt to flow into this hole even if it can't really reach it. And I think this is still considered a bug, but I've seen some designs of farms that use actually this behavior. The important part is that this costs a lot of CPU performance, even in 112. So what I did here is to bring a new setting, which is the water flow, that takes two extra options apart from vanilla, the correct options allows water to search for holes only as much as this current water level can really reach. So this is the most optimized. And then the optimized setting, which is somewhere in between the vanilla, is that optimizes vanilla flow without introducing too many weird quirks. So let me show you an example. If I switch to correct, if the water cannot reach to the hole, it will spill. But if it can, it won't spill, it will just go to that hole. So this works with the obvious case here, here, we have five blocks out and it works fine. Now a little problem is that when you remove the water source, the remaining water flows can spread a little bit. And that this is understandable because we have here lower water levels that form further away from the hole when the water dissipates, so they can spill up a bit. But that's something that if it bothers you, I made a special setting, as I said, optimize which allows water to search a little bit further, but still much less than with vanilla, and that removes those quirky forming water streams. So the optimized setting pretty much looks exactly like vanilla, except we save a little bit on performance. So how much does this change improve the performance overall? We have here those 128 diamond sh flashing pads above us, rocking 20 milliseconds per tick, obviously. Let's change it to optimized. Wait a bit until it subsides, and we can see about 25% improvement. So let's switch to the correct option, which still allows water to flow into the five blocks away gaps, if they can reach it. And we have another 20-25% improvement, so essentially that already decent 1.12 flow could be improved almost twice, being in total 30 times better than 113 flowing water. <laughs> GG! <laughs> So that's it guys for today, if you want to test it yourself, the link to my old testing world with the mob farm is in the description, you can go to minus thousand minus thousand to find this performance testing area. I hope this old deal with 113 is some sort of an inefficiency bug, not a broken water flow design, and it still could be fixed in the future. For now, try not to run too many of water flushing based contraptions at once. In terms of this particular design, refrain of using more than two of them at the same time and you should be fine. 
Also the link to the carpet mod with the new water flow setting is in the description so you can play a little bit with it on your own if you want. So if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave me a like or leave me a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new and see you in the next one. Bye bye!